In Havana, the stranded holidaymakers had something new to worry about. Windows were being taped for the arrival of Hurricane George. But if we're in no danger at all, why are they doing this? Yeah. You can see the hurricane hitting now. This is not outside, this is inside the building. We can't even get out. All the doors have been blocked off. It was windy, it was raining. Um, you could see the trees bending from side to side. The hotel took quite a bit of damage and the rain was actually lashing down for a whole two days. The flooding was everywhere. There was no lights on, so you couldn't see where you was going. My partner got really, really scared. The hurricane went as quickly as it came, leaving sunshine and blue skies. Keo Lago seemed just a short flight away. But they were now told no plane seats were available. The news caused uproar. Everybody just, just looked at each other gobsmacked. And people started getting a bit tense and started shouting. It, it, it was mayhem. Everybody was looking for their tour rep. There was our group who didn't have a tour rep, you know, the lost and lonely ones. This is absolutely diabolical how we've been treated. Everybody, including yourself, no disrespect to you, has just said, oh, it's nothing to do with me. People were standing on chairs, people were standing on stages. This is my dream holiday. I am here. I've got a building site over there. I'm stuck in a hotel and I've booked a beach holiday. I don't know what to do and I'm at my wit's end. People screaming at the top of their voices. We're never going to get there. There's too many up there. On Wednesday, obviously, this place will be on fire. Um, the, the manager himself, he, he had to bring in a, a group of musicians just to drown out the noise that we were making. On Monday, we were flying on mm. Tuesday. Airlines on Monday <clears> were told that the hurricane was going to hit us and we should not be flying into. We were still flying in here. Six days after their arrival in Havana, they were finally able to leave. And when they arrived in Cayo Largo, they found it had been completely untouched by Hurricane George. We thought that we were going to go to an idyllic island, Cayo Largo, looked beautiful. What we actually got was a hotel from hell. We actually got six days in Havana in the worst nightmare I could ever imagine. It was as if you were waiting for somebody to come out with a camera and say, gotcha. Terry Hernandez paid £672 for her holiday with Captivating Cuba. The company has apologised for the inconvenience and offered her £150 to cover the additional expenses she incurred in the Neptuna Hotel. She's turned this down. Andrew Hoyland and Amina Radley paid £1,268 for their holiday with Hayes and Jarvis. They've accepted £634 as a goodwill payment. The holiday season hots up in May, and with it comes flight delays. The average delay now on any charter flight you're going to take this summer is going to be around about 40 minutes. So if you get a delay that's less than 40 minutes, you can count yourself lucky. But that's a pretty bad indictment of the charter airline business. Last summer, Britannia Airways actually had the worst record of punctuality. Uh, one out of every five flights they operated was an average over an hour late. Few people rave about airline food, and holidaymakers Gillian Streak and Sue Nicholas were about to get a right bellyful when their flight to Benidorm was delayed. Sue, along with her daughter and mother, booked a break with Thompson's, the travel company that owns Britannia Airways. Benidorm is the place. You just go, you can enjoy it, there's something for everybody. Gillian had planned her seven-day break to escape the British winter weather. It gave me something to look forward to, everybody else had their holidays through the year. Their flight was scheduled for 10pm. They set off in plenty of time. We got there at 8 o'clock. Um, I took the bags in, put the bags on, we checked in straight away, no problem, checking in. I thought oh, it was wonderful. Then they told us a four-hour delay. I was a little bit annoyed because I really wanted to get off and be on my way, but I thought four hours didn't know really, it'll pass in no time. It's your life and you can do what you want Do what 
Quarter to two, they called us to go onto the plane. But they took my mum first with her being in a wheelchair. But the plane's engines failed to roar into life. There was a problem. They didn't know what the problem was, but they couldn't close the doors because it wasn't allowed. So we, we sat there and just sat and waited, and we was just so cold, my mum was crying, and we sat there till four o'clock. The person sitting next to me actually went to sleep, and when we actually got taken off the plane two hours later, when she woke up, she thought we'd actually flown there and arrived, and she just looked at me and went, have we arrived yet? You know, and I just said, oh, no, so we're still in Leeds. And then they said we, we could get off the plane again. They trudged back to the departure lounge. It had been seven hours since they'd eaten. Britannia now offered them a meal. They decided to give us the food they were going to give us on the aeroplane, which was actually chicken curry with um, jelly for afterwards. At five o'clock in the morning, it's not very appealing. No, not for breakfast. Not after you've not slept all night. You know, you just don't want a chicken curry. You want to get to Benny Dome. Dawn came and went. The next thing we heard was at seven o'clock in the morning, saying that we were going to be boarded on the plane at half past nine. So we got on the plane, we started to move, and everybody started to cheer. All of a sudden we heard this massive bang. And the pilot actually spoke to us and said that there was a problem in the cockpit, that we had to go back into the bay. Next thing we know, we're pulling back in. Everybody, by this time, was in uproar. Everybody was shouting um, and carrying on because were, everybody wanted to get off this plane. By this time, I thought, well, I've had enough. They're just really taking the mickey. Please don't keep me waiting. Please don't keep me waiting. Please don't keep me waiting. And then people are getting really agi agitated because of lack of sleep, not knowing what's going on, and we should have been on holiday. You feel like a prisoner. You know, you just sat there and, and, and can't go anywhere. And there's nothing you can do about it. They waited and watched for information. They told us that there was a plane coming in at two o'clock from Dublin. So we thought, well, that's not too bad. It was 11 o'clock, on his way, two o'clock. Yeah, we'll be on our plane and we'll be a little bit. Benny Dome. Five to two, bing bong, passengers for Alicante. And we all stood up thinking, oh, great, we're boarding. The plane you're supposed to be boarding hasn't arrived. You just want to lash out at somebody who's in charge because to you, they're not doing the job. They should be making it more comfortable for you. They should be giving you at least an explanation or an apology. But what did Britannia give them? <laughs> what a laugh. Chicken curry and rice. Couldn't believe it. Chicken curry for breakfast and chicken curry for dinner. Oh, well, well, we did have chicken curry. We did eat it. It was nice at that time. So tired, tired of waiting, tired of waiting for you. It was nightfall when the airline announced that a plane would be flying in to pick them up at 7 o'clock. They'd been in the airport 23 hours when the flight was finally called. So we all, we all gets on the plane, 7 o'clock, and we started moving. I, and we thought, we, nobody dare say anything at first because we didn't know if we were going to stop again. And then when we actually went down the room where it was like 7.35 and we're all going, yes. Everybody's clapping and, you know, like, yeah, you know. Um, we knew then we were on his way. It came round to the meal and they brought us meals round. And we thought, that smell. And when we opened it up, it was chicken curry and rice. <laughs> 
Thomson Holidays has apologised for the delay, but says it relies on the airline to make proper arrangements for its customers. It's sorry that Sue Nicholas felt these were inadequate. Sue was able to claim £60 on her insurance. Gillian Streak decided not to take the matter further. Next week, a desert holiday in Egypt which turned into this. The heavens absolutely opened. The streets turned into a river. You would think you were probably somewhere like Venice. And caught in an avalanche. And there was just tons and tons of snow piling over my head. It just, I couldn't breathe. Next in our new thriller, Trevor Eve has an evil streak. a holiday from hell, please call us on 0870-901-4224. That's 0870-901-4224.